Yo, what is going on guys? Jack here, and welcome to episode 14 of my Arsenal playthrough here on Football Manager 2015. And today, we're going to be kicking things off with a game against Man City. But before we get to that game, we are going to review, on a slightly down note, the fixtures of this year. Last season, we won the league. We did it comfortably. We beat big teams and slipped up against little teams. Now, I'm kind of hoping that's going to be the trend this year going into this game against Manchester City. Because as the league table shows you here... Things really haven't got off to the start you'd hope for off the back of a previous title win. So let's review the fixtures. We have also played in the Champions League, which I'll review as well. Uh, but last episode, we did lose to Tottenham 3-2. Since then, if I just highlight the league results, they've been hit and miss. Two wins and two defeats. The defeats coming against Crystal Palace and Hull. The wins coming against Cardiff and Norwich. Really? They're four games we need to win. We lost to Hull last year, so in some ways it almost doesn't surprise me, but it, it's annoying to say the least. Against Norwich here, this was a comfortable game. We were 4-0 up at half-time. In the end, the game finished 4-1. So it's a little bit disappointing to lose the clean sheet, but Sanchez played well, got a goal. Uh, Depay and uh, Royce with the other goals. Unfortunately for us, Depay has been injured for a little bit, and Pogba's been injured for a short spell, and that did kind of impact us a little bit because I've had to kind of rotate the strikers up front. Anyway, going into this game, you can see here Gabriel Barbosa started it up top for us in this game where we lost 3-2 to Palace. Honestly, no real excuses it was just a overall very poor performance we didn't take the chances that came our way perhaps as a result of not having Depay leading the line as you can see Giroud did come on off the bench for Barboza in the 58th minute and uh, he did make an impact he did grab a goal unfortunately for us Barboza has been I don't want to say he's been struggling because he's improved a lot and he is playing okay but have no goals in your first five league games is a little bit concerning Anyway, if we look at the League Cup, he's not done too bad in that. He got two goals in two cup games, and on the continental stage, uh, he's again suffering a little bit, which is a shame. It is a shame, but this was another disappointing defeat. Anyway, the next game that we played was against Valencia. This was in the Champions League. Uh, this was the first game, and we won it, which was great to see. Jack Wiltshire with an 87th minute winner. He came on off the bench. I want to say it was an inspired sub. 81st minute, came on, grabbed a goal. Superb stuff. It was an uh, amazing um, game because we had dominated it. And so to get a win here was really good because last year, and you may remember in the Champions League, we really rode our luck. And in the end, we got through by the skin of our teeth. Uh, you can see the teams in our group are Freiburg, Valencia and Galatasaray. That really has been a kind draw on us. And I'm looking to capitalise off that this year. Um, Freiburg is the team we're yet to play in our group. But overall, uh, a win and a draw. The draw coming against Galatasaray. Two pretty decent results, really. Anyway, uh, the next kind of league game was against Cardiff following the Valencia game. This was another pretty convincing win, another high-scoring game for us. It kind of feels like the games that we've won in the league, we've won comfortably. And then when we lose in the league, it's just... I don't even know what to pin it down to, but it's just simply us not performing, not taking the chances that came our way. I guess this game we did, you know, four out of our six shots on target going in. Uh, Royce grabbing two, Giroud grabbing two. Um, pretty pleasing, to be honest, and that was another good result. We then beat Sunderland 6-0. This was a fully rotated team going absolutely ham. Zivkovic grabbing a hat-trick and an incredible hat-trick. Twelve Within 12 minutes of scoring his first goal, he got his first hat-trick. And that was in the first half after just 20 minutes. The youngster's been a player who I didn't really intend to play in the first team this year. And as you can see, when he played in the league, he was disappointing. But that hat-trick in the cup has kind of made me promote him to the first team and seriously consider him a useful squad player. Gabriel Barbosa, who I criticised a little bit, did grab his two goals in this game too, uh, with Billy Jones getting an own goal. But that was good nevertheless to advance in the Capital One Cup. As I mentioned, we did lose to Hull, which is a result that we've had before. You can see here in the league, uh, they've only won two games, and one of them was against us, which is pretty disappointing. It was away from home, and we didn't play badly. I mean, you can see here we had double the amount of shots. I have a feeling last time we played them, it might have finished 2-0-2, two -two, and it was a bit of a smash and grab their way in this exact fixture last year. Maybe one of you guys can let me know in the comments but yeah it was disappointing uh, one thing you'll also notice is Chesney got a knock but I didn't sub him off because I didn't have a keeper on my bench and that came back to bite me it came back to bite me hard because as you guys may know in English competitions like the Premier League if you've got a player under the age of 21 he doesn't need to be registered to play so if your two goalkeepers that are registered to play in the Premier League are injured, you have at least got the opportunity to promote a young player into the first team to play or a virtual player who's usually below the age required. Uh, 
The issue I had is, in the Champions League, you register your squad, and that is that. That is the players you are stuck with. I had two goalkeepers registered. I had Chesney, and I had our other newly acquired player, in, with the intentions of avoiding the situation, Ruben Mino. Both of them are injured. Fortunately, to, for today's game, we have got Damian Martinez, who we can promote. But this left me with a conundrum going into this Galatasaray game, because I didn't have a goalkeeper. So Paul, Mr. Paul Pogba, got a chance in goal. Bizarre scenes. He did concede two, and to be honest, I think they had four shots on target. So he didn't have that much to do, and what he did concede, a normal keeper probably would have saved. It was disappointing, this game, because we did lead for the first hour. You know, going out into the first hour, having scored in the 36th minute with 60 minutes on the clock, we were winning. And it was going great, but unfortunately, uh, they equalised. We then pulled away again, and then uh, we conceded a last-minute goal. But here you can see Zivkovic, the youngster who got the hat-trick in the Capital One Cup, as I mentioned, giving him some new opportunities, especially with Depay being out injured. And he did okay in this game. But unfortunately for us, Pogba's not a goalkeeper. I'm pretty sure a keeper would have got to that effort there from outside the area. Um, but no, all in all, to get a draw in a game where we didn't have a goalkeeper... I, I can think of a lot worse ways it could have gone. I mean, I suppose one advantage of having Pogba in goal is you get to utilise his passing loads. But with the exception of that, he's not too great at catching the ball, which is usually the fundamental aspect of being a goalkeeper. And it did kind of impact us somewhat. But anyway, as I mentioned, we did get the goal here. I think it was Zivkovic to Ozil. It was indeed. So a good assist there, Zivkovic being involved again. Ozil, who I played deeper before. He was playing the centre attack in mid-roll. European football, the Community Shield, the Capital One Cup and the Premier League. You know, all these fixtures within a fairly short period of time and with internationals having been played in the meantime has really meant that my players haven't had much of a rest. So I have had to rotate my team where possible. But anyway, they did get a goal here. Pogba questionable goalkeeper but I can't really blame him too much but unfortunately that did result in a 2-2 draw so anyway that brings us on to today's game against Manchester City and things as I've mentioned and as you guys can see could be going a lot better for us it's been largely disappointing to be in 11th place on six points is less than ideal looking at the rest of the league teams have slipped up like realistically, we are only four points off second, and I say only because I, I mean, I'm we've played terribly, we, we've not got the results we need. But the way I'm looking at this is if we can beat Man City today, the gap is at most gonna be four points between us and top. If we lose today, this could immediately hinder our title credentials. However, the thing that kind of stamped our title credentials last year was just how good we were at beating the big teams. The big, important games our players turned up. I'm hoping we can have a little bit of that today. But anyway, as I mentioned, we are without a keeper, so that is going to mean Martinez can actually be called up for this game. Uh, in terms of transfers, there were a few. You may notice Dabucci's missing. That is because he has been moved on. There were a few players who were sold in the end. No new signings after the last episode, but I did let Umtiti go for 11.5 million. Uh, he was unhappy. He wanted to play first team football. He's a very good player, and he, he probably will be a very good player, but I got him in on a 800k fee last year. He played good for 11 games as kind of a, a sub-on option and a kind of a rotation option. I'm pretty delighted to basically turn around over £10 million profit in six months on a player. Um, so that was great. Debucci I sold for £9.5 million. However, this fee can raise... Uh, or oh, sorry, rise to £16 million based on the fact that for every appearance he makes for PSG, they have to pay us 100 k Which means that over 50 games, if they pay us... Um, if they pay us 100k for 50 games, which is the cap, we'll end up with 16 million or just shy of that for Dabucci, which I think is a pretty good bit of business. He was a good player for us. You can see even last year, though, he wasn't kind of playing every game for us at right back. And so I'm quite confident to let Callum Chambers have a stab at that position. Other players to go on out. Flamini went out for a free to Newcastle. Uh, you may have noticed if you were watching closely last episode that we were a little bit over our wage budget. Flamini and Rizitsky, two older players, both in my under-21 side as just kind of reserves, were on £100,000 combined. 
got rid of them both on freeze with Rosicki. Um, he kind of threw a hit. Uh, oh, sorry, Rosicki. Uh, he he threw a tantrum when I didn't get rid of him in January. He moaned and cried and. It, it was tragic, so I basically told him, look, I'll mutually terminate your contract, and he came back and said a million pounds, which actually worked out at being a saving, because he had two years left on his deal, so I was quite happy to let him go. And the other players are just low knees out. Zell Lem is the one who may, may, very slim chance, may end up in the first team at some point. He's a good player, but he's like nothing incredible for us, and he, he's the kind of young player who... You know, we'll we'll let him have a chance to prove himself at Sheffield, give him a chance to play regular first team football, then maybe reevaluate how good he really is. But anyway, those are the transfers. As you can see, in the end, the total spending amounted to just under fifty million. In terms of where that leaves us financially, we're still eighty eight million in the black. But you can see that Paul Pogba spending spree um definitely caught up with us and you can see we spiked here at 186 million that was of course after the Walcott and Oxley chamberlain sale and since then we did go on a bit of a spending spree in the league so all in all it's not been an ideal start to the season but as i mentioned we could be in a lot worse situation i kind of feel like considering how hit and miss we've been to still be you know only four points if we can win this game off the title like leaders would be a mighty mighty impressive showing anyway for this game we are missing a few players unfortunately sanchez is going to be out for 10 to two, 10 days to two weeks uh, but obviously both our first choice keepers are injured which is a little bit of a pain it does mean that we have a little bit of a makeshift look about us perhaps uh, in terms of our bench and in terms of we're lacking sanchez so we kind of have to kind of move some players around in order to facilitate for everyone uh, this is the team i think i'm going to go with right now uh wiltshire's going to come in wiltshire player who i've kind of i don't want to say i've forgotten about but last year he didn't get much of a chance in the first team but he is a very very good player in fm and to be honest, to be honest he's improved a lot whilst he's been playing for us he still played 27 games last year granted eight of them were off the bench this year he's been a little bit of a kind of uh, I don't want to say a passenger, but when he's played, he's not really impressed. He did get that important goal for us, of course, in the Champions League game. But in the league, when he's come on, he's not really had the impact I'd desire. But anyway, let's get into today's game. Kadira and Pogba are going to be partnering. You may notice that I have reverted back to our old system in terms of the player roles uh, and the instructions. Just because... I kind of I've decided we need to stick with what we know. So we're going back with Giroud up front for this game, but we do have options on the bench in Zivkovic, uh, Barboza, you know, two players who can potentially come on. Depay is also going to be back. This is his first game back in the squad at all since he had an injury where he twisted his ankle, I believe it was. Yeah, he twisted his ankle, which kind of was a little bit of a pain. But uh, he's back in the squad now. Hopefully he can work some magic for us off the bench if need be. But hopefully we won't rely on that because this this is going to be a tricky game. We are playing Manchester City. Now, we did play well against these guys last year. And we did beat them 5-1, you may remember, in a pretty memorable live com. As you can see here, a defeat for us could see us slip into the relegation zone. Now, I'm really hoping that doesn't happen. Um, but a win is pretty much essential here. If we don't win this game... I don't want to say we can kiss goodbye to our title kind of hopes, but we're essentially going to have to have a perfect season in terms of we won't be able to afford to slip up against little teams anymore. Last year, what kind of saved us was, despite slipping up against teams like Hall, like we have already on this save, was we beat Man City twice, I believe. We beat Man United twice, 3-2 and 5-1. We beat Chelsea, I think, once out of the two times. We didn't slip up against the big teams. And we're going to need to perform like that again today. So we'll see how we get on here. Looking at it, we are dominating. And Royce has an effort. My assistant's advice gets in the way. But Sterling finds the net. That was the rebound of a free kick to make it 1-0. Of course, last time we played Man City, Royce got a hat-trick of free kicks. This is a game, though, where we need to step up our game. We need to show in these big matches that we can be title hopefuls and Aguero misses a sitter there to give you City a way back into this game that was sloppy defending so in terms of what's really been going wrong on this save I, I can't quite put my finger on it I don't know if it's a little bit of complacency I don't know if it's just players being out of touch I don't know if it's just the fact that we fluked last year is it the tactic changes that I made the very minor ones that's a fantastic pass though by Marcelo Sterling hits the post 
But no, I can't quite work out what it is. I've gone back to basics with our tactics. It kind of feels like we're lacking that clinical striker. Giroud was that for us last year, and he was also great at assisting the play. Uh, obviously, Giroud is still in the squad, but he hasn't had as much of an impact uh, when we have played him, I don't feel. Whereas, I feel like Depay got two goals in the Community Shield. He was scoring in the league a little bit. You know, he got his first league goal. Then he twisted his ankle and was out for four weeks. And that kind of... We'd invested £26 million in him to hopefully be that complete forward that we wanted. And the injury... I wasn't. I don't want to say I wasn't prepared for it, but um, it wasn't something that you know I'd, I kind of had a contingency plan for. Giroud was there, but Giroud wasn't the best complete forward, so I started playing Gabriel Barboza and Zivkovic there, but it just wasn't really working. And in a lot of games, I was having to go with a more direct style of play. Very often, we were chasing games, and complete forward really doesn't work when you're chasing games like that. You're better off with an advanced forward. So Giroud would often come on off the bench, play that role for us. And we'd start pumping balls up to him, but it just wasn't working like it had been the previous year. So we've gone back to the advanced forward system here. We're not playing direct football. We are going to try and build from the back. But yeah, it's been pretty... I don't even know how to phrase it. It's just been a little disappointing, a little bit disheartening. But right now we're playing well, looking at the positives. Although Belanta's now injured, so I guess the positives are... And lacking, but we have got Mertesacker off the bench. Of course, even with Umtiti and Debucci's departure, we still have players like John Stones, Belanta, uh, Gibbs is still at the side. We have plenty of options in terms of players we can bring on. Looking at the average ratings here, it's not looking too bad. However, I'm going to bring on Depay and play him up top. I'm going to give him a chance to kind of come on off the bench in the game here. It might be a bit risky because he is coming back from injury. But I want to give him a chance to kind of get 30 minutes in a big game here. Hopefully get him back into the pace of the Premier League. And maybe even grab him a goal for his confidence. But anyway, looking at it, City on the attack here. Pogba though, mopping up. He is playing that deep line playmaker role for us right now. Pogba is just an incredible centre mid in FM. He can facilitate pretty much every role. He can fit into any system and that makes him such a great player to have on the pitch for us. But here, Aguero, wow, fantastic goal by him. Lucky, uh, lazy defending. I was about to say lackey defending, but that isn't a sentence. But just really lazy defended by our centre-backs, however. But we have got a chance here, maybe Chambers, Depay, options in the middle. Royce! Royce hits the woodwork and then he can't direct the... The rebound past Joe Hart. How heartbreaking. Although, have we got another chance? No, we haven't. Oh, no. Jekko, route one. Martinez with the save. Of course, I should point out, I can remember if I've mentioned this, but our keepers who are injured are going to be back soon. But Martinez maybe should have saved that Aguero shot the more I think about it. But Sterling! Raheem Sterling! Is that his first goal of the season? It's his second goal of the season. It can't come at a much better time than that, though. What a hit, son. 2-1. I said these are the big games where we can maybe get back in the title race. Looking at the stats, we've been the better team. There's four minutes left of added time. There might be a chance here. Can we break? Wilshire, chip the keeper. Hit it. He's gone for it. Joe Hart's there. It's almost as if he could hear me there and egging him on to shoot. But that should be game. That should be game unless there's a late, late twist in the tail and that's it. That's got to be it. Wiltshire, just get rid of it. Not to Asamoa. Merzazaka deals with it. No nonsense. Depay, Royce, blow the whistle, ref. GG, 2-1 Arsenal. That is the kind of win I needed to kickstart our season. Hopefully now we can build upon that. Of course, Man City were top of the league and unbeaten in their first five. So to do that, that is the kind of form and fight we need to show for the rest of the year. Even if all the teams above us win their games in hand, at most we're going to be four points off the pace. Which, considering the start we've had, in terms of we've only won half of our games, could certainly be a lot worse. But anyway, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this episode madness going on in that game but what a late goal that is by Raheem Sterling hopefully he can build upon that because he's not been great uh, as always if you have enjoyed this video if you're enjoying the series smash the like button if you're new to my channel you can subscribe for Football Manager 2015 videos and uh, I'm going to check what fixtures we've got coming up quickly just to see who we're going to be playing next time I have a feeling it might be Chelsea in the league I will just check how many games time that is I think we're going to do the Chelsea game um, so I'll see you guys for that. That is not too many games away, but that should be a big game away from home at Stamford Bridge. 
hopefully a chance to maybe get a win on the board and close that gap at the top even further.